ever heard a really great bassoonist or another instrumentalist use vibrato in their playing and wonder, how did they do that? Well, you're in luck today because today I'm going to show you how exactly to produce vibrato on the bassoon, how to get better at it, and how to start incorporating it into your own playing. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, and on this channel, I believe that the bassoon should be accessible to everyone, which is why that I help to provide you with the skills that you need to learn to play anything that you want. So if you're new here, I would love if you could subscribe to the channel so that you stay up to date on any future videos that I make that might help you out. Now, before we dive into the specific exercises of producing vibrato, I want to talk about what exactly vibrato is and how it's actually produced on the bassoon. If you're already familiar with this and you want to just go straight to the exercises, I've put chapter markers down in the video description and you can skip around to wherever you need. In a nutshell, vibrato is a series of pulsations on a given note. It is an expressive tool that we can use to help increase the intensity or increase the drama in a particular part of music. So it's not necessarily used all the time. Now, before you try to play vibrato, you need to make sure that your fundamentals are, are all in place, that you already use really great air support, your embouchure is in good condition, and that you can hold notes without vibrato, so straight tones, and control them really well, because adding vibrato to a sound is not gonna make it sound better if unless you have a really solid foundation in your fundamentals. The way that vibrato is produced on the bassoon is with the abdominal muscles. It is not produced with anything to do with your embouchure or your jaw or your oral cavity. Some instruments do use jaw vibrato, such as saxophone and some brass instruments where they're actually moving their embouchure to manipulate the vibrato. Traditionally, saxophonists employ jaw vibrato, and all this means is that micro manipulations in the jaw are what cause the sound to vibrate. We don't do that on bassoon. We only use our air support and our abdominal muscles to control the pulsations of the vibrato. Let's dive into how to actually create the vibrato on the bassoon. As I said before, you're gonna be using your abdominal muscles to manipulate the airstream to be able to make the pulsations on the notes. Before you begin, place your hand on your stomach and say the word ha. Now, say the word ha. You should feel a difference with your abdominal muscles and how they move more forcefully when you say ha versus ha. The more forceful ha is the type of motion that you need to be able to create the vibrato on the bassoon. Instead of saying ha, let's say who, which focuses the corners of our lips in more, more like our embouchure, and it's gonna be more akin to what it's like to play. So let's do four who's in a row. Who, 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 who. It's kind of silly, but that's kind of what it feels like. Now let's try that on the bassoon. So pick a comfortable note for you somewhere in the middle register of the bassoon. You'll want to put a metronome on at 60 and you'll play four who's like we just did in a row on whatever note that you pick right exactly with the metronome. It sounds like this. So you just played quarter notes with this exercise. Now let's play eighth notes with the metronome. Now let's play triplets with the metronome. Let's play 16th notes. And now, because vibrato should never feel measured or robotic, it should really feel natural and organic, like it kind of comes out of nowhere. 
So to practice that kind of un, uneven, organic type of vibrato, we're going to practice with quintuplets, which are putting five notes on each of those beats. If it helps you, you could think university, 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 in order to fit the five notes into each of those beats. So let's try it on the bassoon. So it's great that you know this exercise. Now what? You'll want to start incorporating this into your daily practice. Spend five or 10 minutes in your daily warm up routine practicing the exercise that I just showed you. You'll want to find ways to vary this exercise. So you're, you're going to want to change the tempo of the metronome as you're playing so you can practice at different speeds. You can practice things like quintuplets at a really slow tempo, and you can practice things like triplets at a really fast tempo and see how they feel different differently. And when you get really comfortable playing all these different rhythms at different tempos, then it's going to become more like second nature to you. You also want to try playing it at different dynamics. What does it feel like to play vibrato at a piano dynamic versus at a forte dynamic? I can't stress enough how important it is to listen to really great musicians use vibrato especially vocalists. Now vocalists tend to develop vibrato a lot more naturally than us instrumentalists do. And so we want to try and imitate what they're doing as much as possible because that's sort of the most natural, most organic way that vibrato is used. So find some really great vocalists, find some really great instrumentalists, bassoonists, violinists, flutists that you like who you can start to imitate their vibrato. While you're listening to these great musicians, try to identify all the little nuances in their vibrato. Are they using fast vibrato? Are they using slow vibrato? Are they playing a straight tone and then it opens up into wider vibrato? That's actually a very common technique that's used for longer notes. Try to identify what type of vibrato is being used and what type of music and what type of character it creates. Ask yourself all these questions as you're listening and you'll be able to fill out your toolbox of vibrato and be able to use all these different types and incorporate them into your own playing. Another tip for getting better at vibrato in general is to try singing through passages. So if you're trying to use vibrato in something that you're playing, try singing it first and try to do the vibrato in your voice before you try to do it on the bassoon. Now, if you're like me and you are really uncomfortable with your voice and you're not great at singing, that's okay. No one has to hear you. You can just do it in your own personal practice. But I guarantee if you can sing what you want to play, that means that you can hear what you want to play and you're going to be more likely to execute it on the bassoon the way that you want to. So I've covered how to produce vibrato on the bassoon, how to practice it and how to get better at it. But I haven't really talked much about when to actually use vibrato. In my opinion, vibrato should be used pretty sparingly on the bassoon. I really only use vibrato when I'm playing a solo or when I know that I'm going to have an exposed part in some sort of ensemble and I know the audience is going to hear me and so I add a little bit of vibrato. In many different types of ensembles, whether it be in bands, orchestras, chamber ensembles, the bassoon is often playing a supportive or an accompaniment role to other instruments more often than not. We're also often playing the roots and the fifths of chords when we're talking about intonation. And if the bassoon were to use vibrato all the time, we're kind of messing with the integrity or the purity of the music if we're doing a lot of pulsations underneath. I'm going to play an example for you of what vibrato should sound like on the bassoon. And I'm going to kind of mark the spots where I use vibrato, which usually are kind of longer notes where you can actually hear it. And you can kind of see the choices that I made in my own expression. And maybe that will give you some ideas on how you can incorporate vibrato into your own playing.
this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It really helps the channel grow and it helps me to know if this content is really useful for you. I'd like to know in the comments, do you have any favorite musicians, vocalists or bassoonists or really anybody that uses vibrato that you really love and you wanna try to imitate? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below.